when we decide to move to Canada, if we don't have strong ties with any city, then it's very difficult to choose one. We do have several options like Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, Ottawa, Calgary, Halifax, etc. But this video is a comparison between the two most famous Canadian cities, Toronto and Vancouver. We'll compare the two cities based on several factors, starting with geography, of course, the weather, the population in these two different cities, the crime rate in the two cities. We'll also talk about the cost of living, which is a very important factor, of course. Then the different job sectors. We'll also talk about the local transports and we will talk about the different time zone. So this video is going to be very interesting. I just hope that this video will help you choose the city where you want to live in Canada. So without any further ado, let's begin this video. Okay, so let's talk about the geography. It's very important to know the place where you're going to live. So we'll talk about the geography of uh, Toronto and Vancouver. We'll talk about the comparison. Okay, so this is the map of Canada and this is the place where Toronto is located and this is the place where Vancouver is located. So Toronto basically is towards the east and Vancouver is towards the west of Canada. Now Vancouver is in British Columbia and of course Toronto is in Ontario. So let me tell you that Vancouver is the largest city of British Columbia and Toronto is the largest city of Ontario. So the choice gets very difficult. Now, Vancouver is bounded to the north by English Bay and the Burrent Inlet and to the south by the Fraser River, while Toronto is bounded by Lake Ontario to the south and by Humber, Don and Rough Rivers from the other sides. Please don't get mistaken by the term lake. Lake Ontario is like really, really, really huge. Now, Vancouver has got mountains there as well, so the land is flat and hilly while Toronto's land is mostly flat. Now both of the cities have got beaches while Vancouver has got beaches for the Burrett Inlet. Toronto has got beach for Lake Ontario. However, I believe that Vancouver beaches are more real ones because beach of Lake Ontario is more of a lake shore rather than beach. Okay, now let's talk about the weather. Of course, when you talk of Canada, it's very important to talk about weather. The weather conditions can get really, really, really harsh in Canada. So we'll talk about the weather conditions in different months in the last one year. So here's a comparison which is very interesting. You can see in the month of July 2019, the minimum temperature of uh, Vancouver was 10.4 and the maximum was 28.5, while that of Toronto was minimum of 14.3 and maximum of 33 degrees which means that Toronto gets really hotter in summertime. Now talking of winters you can see the month of February or January. So the month of February in Vancouver the minimum temperature was minus 8.8 .8 degrees while the month of February in Toronto was really really harsh and January was even harsher because it had minus 23 degrees temperature. So in a nutshell, Vancouver's temperature is much better because in winters it is not that cold and in summers it is not that hot. It is more of a moderate kind of a weather. All right, now let's talk about the population and the crime rate. So both the cities have got people from multiple origin, from multiple religions. So let's talk about the people, the population in uh, Vancouver. So in Vancouver, actually, Canadians are like 46%, like the white Canadians. Chinese are 28%. South Asians are 6% and Filipinos are 6% as well. The total immigrant population is about 40% in Vancouver. While in Toronto, the white Canadian population is about 50%. South Asian is about 12%. Chinese is about 11% and Filipino is 5%. And the number of immigrants in Toronto are much higher. They're 46%. Now let me tell you that these are the statistics 
from 2016 census this statistics have changed a bit recently i read a couple of articles where it was told that the number of immigrants in toronto have crossed more than 50 percent so more than 50 percent of population of toronto is actually the immigrant population here by south asian i mean indian pakistani uh, sri lankan bangladeshi people uh, primarily punjabis and in the case of uh, Vancouver, the Chinese population is really huge over there. In fact, the Chinatown of Vancouver is the biggest in Canada. Of course, Toronto has got its own Chinatown as well, but the Vancouver Chinatown is the biggest one. Okay, now let's talk about the crime rate. Of course, if we want to go to a safer city, to a safer place where we can live with our families without any worries. So the crime index in Vancouver is 36, while the safety index is 64. Toronto is very similar. The crime index is 37, while the safety index is 63. Okay, with these statistics, I know it would be very difficult for you to judge these two cities. So let me compare these statistics with a city in um, India and one in Pakistan. So Delhi in India and Karachi in Pakistan I chose. So both of them have got a pretty similar crime index and safety index as well. Delhi safe crime index is about 58 and safety index is 41. Karachi's it's 56, safety index is 44. So you can see both Vancouver and Toronto are much lesser in the crime index and much higher in the safety index. So of course you can be rest assured about both of these cities. Both cities are very safe but of course there are some crimes which do happen. Okay, now let's talk about the different job sectors in the two cities. And a bonus, I'll also tell you about the job salaries, the minimum wage and the average wages in the two cities. Okay, Vancouver has got many jobs in technology, financial services, meaning uh, insurance, banking, accounting, uh, manufacturing sector, in the retail trade sector, construction, educational services, information culture and recreation, in film, in tourism, and in agriculture and fishing. However, in Toronto, it's very similar, but still it's a bit different. Obviously, technology jobs are the highest in Toronto in Canada. Then financial services, again in Toronto. Then fashion apparel jobs. Then life sciences, design, music and film. Aerospace is very prominent here. Then food, beverage, and tourism and events. So these are all the primary job sectors in the two cities. Now the minimum wage is also very similar. The minimum wage of British Columbia is 1385 and that of Ontario is 14. Okay, now when we've talked about the minimum wage, it would be very interesting to talk about the average salaries as well. So here's a chart. It is from uh, salaryexplorer.com. It clearly says that uh, Toronto is a winner over here because the minimum salaries are a bit on the higher side in Toronto. Now you can see the minimum salary in Toronto is $9.25 Canadian dollars. In um, Vancouver, it's $8.86. The median salary, however, is $6,559 Canadian dollars. And in Vancouver, it's $6,483. And the maximum salary per month in is $30,000. 255 Canadian dollars while in uh, Toronto it's 28,997. So they're very similar but still Toronto is a bit on the higher side. I'm really curious who gets that salary, 30,000 per month. Wow, what a salary. Okay, now let's talk about the cost of living in the two cities. I'm sure many people will be interested to know which city is cheaper. Okay, to compare the cost of living, I'll take you to this website, numbeo.com. I just hope that they pronounce it only this way. So you can visit this website and compare the cost of living of any two cities. Over here you'll find the differences. They've clearly mentioned that uh, Vancouver is slightly lower in comparison to Toronto apart from the rents. However, I just read an article just a few weeks back which said that uh, the Rents of Toronto have been increased by 10% since last year and they've crossed the rent prices in Vancouver now. Whatever it is, the rent prices are very similar. 
but apart from that you can see that uh, Vancouver is slightly cheaper than Toronto however just a couple of years ago Toronto was a bit cheaper than Vancouver in the last couple of years prices of rents and other stuff in Toronto have really gone high so you can come over here you can compare different uh, stuff like a simple meal in an inexpensive restaurant would cost you $20 in Toronto while it would cost you $16 in Vancouver. Uh, a Mac meal in McDonald's would cost you $11 in Toronto while it will cost you $10 in Vancouver. So it does differ. Uh, however, the water prices would be same in uh, both these cities. Apart from that, uh, the transportation you can see is also expensive in Toronto. It's 3.25 there and uh, it's uh, 2.95 in Vancouver. The monthly pass is 147 in Toronto while in Vancouver it's 95. So there's a huge difference over here. You can see 35% difference in monthly pass. So what happens in monthly pass actually is that uh, you can uh, get a pass for one month and travel unlimited. So apart from that, uh, you can see the utilities also are more expensive, much more expensive in Toronto than in Vancouver. It, there's a difference of 42%. Apart from that, you can see the apartment rents. Obviously, this constitutes of the major part of our expenses. So it's very important. One bedroom in city center uh, would cost you something like uh, 2100 in Toronto, while in uh, Vancouver, it would cost you something like 2000 if you go outside of downtown or the city center, then you'll get something in uh, around 1700 while in uh, Vancouver, you'll get it in 1600 So again, there's a difference of around $100. So all of this will actually count up to, you know, three, four hundred dollars difference in uh, Vancouver versus Toronto. Toronto is definitely more expensive than Vancouver these days. Right now let's talk about the public transport in the two cities. Now both the cities are great in terms of public transport. Now they've got trains to travel to Vancouver and Toronto from other cities and from the Vancouver and Toronto airport to the to the downtown of the cities. They've got buses. Now in Vancouver they've got SkyTrain which is a totally automated train while in Toronto they've got subway which is very very old but just like the Delhi Metro it's the lifeline of Toronto. Now Vancouver hasn't got any tram or street cars as they say here in Canada but Toronto has got street cars all over the city. It's really fun traveling in those street cars. Okay now to travel in the ocean Vancouver has got sea bus through which you can travel in the ocean from the coastline to the different islands. While in Toronto they've got ferries to travel from the lakeshore to different islands of Lake Ontario. Okay now coming over to the time zone. I'm sure not everyone would be aware that Vancouver and Toronto are in different time zones. Vancouver is in Pacific Daylight Time and Toronto is in Eastern Daylight Time. So let's talk about summers. If it is 7 p.m. in Vancouver then it would be 10 p.m. in Toronto. There's a difference of three hours. If you want to compare it with uh, Indian Standard Time, then it would be 7.30 a.m. of the next day in Delhi, in any place in India rather. While in winters, it would change. However, the time in Vancouver and Toronto would be same, but the time in India would then be 8.30 a.m. of the next day. So the time difference would actually increase by one hour. Okay, so that's it for this video. I just hope that the information shared in this video would uh, help you guys in deciding which city you want to choose. I'll provide some useful links in the description below so that you can also compare based on different statistics which city you want to choose to live in Canada. Thanks for watching this video. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button and share it with your friends if you think it would be useful for them. And Please don't forget to subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet.